Okay, roll call of City Council for the meeting of Wednesday, October 2nd, 2013. Mr. Wynarski, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Evans, Mr. Ancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon. All please rise for a moment. Silent meditation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Mr. President, if I could, this morning continue to ask that we remember all of those who have lost loved ones in our community since the last time we were in these chambers. Uh, in particular, I would like to remember um, and remember in our thoughts the family of Charles Falkerson, um, who was a, a very dedicated individual to the Erie community in, in a, several different ways. So we just want to remember his family, uh, his wife, Johnny Mae Atkinson, and others who uh, are experiencing this loss. Also, we want to thank our God and Creator for giving us the wisdom and the information to make the best decisions for the citizens of the city of Erie. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. President, yes, I had to apologize, man, out of order. I did, um, one thing I wanted to include is for us to remember um, city employee, hardworking city employee. Uh, Dave Rocco is not feeling well physically, so I want to keep him in our thoughts and prayers as well. Um, <clears throat> again, just remembering him in our thoughts. But he, he's fine, but just not feeling physically up to Dave running around. So I wanted to do that. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes of uh, the meeting from September 18th and the bills for payment for October 4th and October 11th. Mr. Brennan, Mr. Evans, Mrs. Moran Kunso, Mr. Jones. Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Wynarski. Okay, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Clem. Uh, with us this morning, we have our retired police chief, uh, Chief Franklin, and uh, as city council president as, and as, as council, we'd like to just present him with a certificate of recognition and uh, for the hard work he's done in the many years. So if Mr. Franklin would please come up. <laughs> Normally, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Franklin, uh, Chief Franklin, for your 35 years, was it? 33. 33. Well, too many, uh, too many years that I can remember, but uh, I want to thank you on behalf of City Council for all the, your years of service. Uh, been an asset, you've had an open door policy with council, and uh, on behalf of council, we present you with this uh, certificate. Okay, thank you. Any very words much. you'd like to say? Yes, uh, just to express my gratitude and uh, all the years of service that I gave and the enjoyment that I got in serving the area community. Uh, thank one and thank all, and I wish the best of luck to the city of Erie. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> We'd also like to mention uh, Mrs. Franklin down there who's had to put up with him for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these 33 years. She gets a standing ovation too. She should get that. <laughs> Absolutely. All righty, Mr. Clem. Uh, I understand we have someone here for a repository sale. Come on up. Come on up. I, uh, if you don't mind, please state your name, speak into the mic so everybody can hear. Thank you. My name is Harold Atkinson, 701 East 21st Street. That's Atkinson's Barbershop. has been there for years. Oh. And it's a vacant lot right across on the other corner. And I've maintained it for the past seven or eight years, mowed the grass every week. Right? And now I just want to go ahead and buy it because other people in the neighborhood want to use it as a picnic ground. Right? So... I want to get it out of the way so it doesn't happen, cause less confusion. And that's it. There's one car garage there with your roof needs repair, semi -block, a cement block 
but I'm going to fix the roof up in the next 30 days, get it repaired, and put new doors on it. That'll be it. Put a row of hedgings up and make the lot look nice. Any questions, Council? Thank you for doing something. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other requests for a repository sale this morning? Hearing none, brings us to our Citizens to be Heard segment. Good morning, Council. My name's Amy Comprator. I'm at 913 State Street, apartment 903. And I'm here to talk to you today about the buses again. You know, one of the things that has come up with uh, this that, I, that I've heard for quite a while, and I'd like to dispel it because it's become kind of like a, a myth of sorts, is this one block thing. A lot of people, when they ride the buses, want to go to the last stop that they knew that the bus went on. Okay. So people who take like the Route 21 go to 6 and French because the way that, that the new stops, as I'll call them, were introduced was not done in a reliable fashion. When you introduce a new system to people, people have to have confidence in it in order to use it. If they don't have that confidence, and if it's not introduced to them in a uh, way that serves justice, then they're not going to use that. They're going to go back to their last thing. So for some of them, like on uh, Route 30, uh, 10th and Peach was always there, and I'm talking about the horizontal one, not the vertical one. So they, they, they go there for their, their first stop and try to get over there for their route because they know that before, that's where that route would be, and it was not changed on that regard. <coughs> Some of these buses have been, I have seen more than once now, I have seen actually more than a handful of times, uh, three buses wrapping around the edge of 10th Street and French there, and one bus and then another bus angled and then another bus trying to angle off. That's a safety hazard, folks. To, especially with the, the width of those, those lanes like that. And when we get snow, I hate to tell those bus drivers, but you're not going to be able to do that all that easily like that again. Because when we get snow, as you all know, <laughs> it all comes down. And uh, each and French are not cared for in the same manner that State Street is. And I'd like an assurance from council in some regard that those streets, Peach and French, if you plan to keep this as a new implementation for the city, then they ought to be respected enough to be taken care of when our winter comes here. And uh, also, I think it, I've had, I've been uh, away for the month of September because I had surgery on my C6, C7, releasing my spinal cord and all that great happy, happy stuff. <laughs> So I now have, again, another round personal experience with uh, limitations and disability. And it's refreshed my mind on this. You cannot hold people that are disabled to the same standards of the abled, in a sense. You wouldn't hold a child to, an adult, to knowing what an adult knows or a teenager. And people with disabilities, they have different limitations. It was hard enough for me this week to go around with this, to go one block, cross the block actually, each way, 
I had to go to see my landlord for Section 8. I had to go see Rite Aid for my prescriptions. And it took a lot out of me considering this, all of what my body is going through. I'm not alone in this. And it doesn't just happen with surgeries. There's people that have disabilities like MS, like uh, there's, there are a lot of people who are out there who have lost faith in all of you, who have lost faith in the system. Don't ask me why I haven't lost faith in the system. But perhaps I, I'm, I love the system too much to lose faith in it. But I assure you that there's people out there that are ailed or ailing that want to come down here, but they always say to me, what are they going to do? What are they really going to do? And I can't restore their faith because I'm not, an, I'm not an elected official, I'll wrap up. But if you choose right actions and be the trusted servants that this city wants, even demands you to be, maybe you can restore their faith in, by your actions and give them hope again so that they'll come down here and voice. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. <clears throat> Any other citizens be heard this morning? Mr. Flowers? Okay. I have an ordinance for final passage, Council File Number 15,847, an ordinance vacating and closing a certain public alley located between West 18th and West 19th Streets and between Cherry and Walnut Streets in the city of Erie, running approximately 130 feet north and south to be closed at the north end of alley at the alleyway where it enters into another alleyway. Motion of Mr. Brennan, second by Mr. Mursky, to Council File Ordinance Bill Number 15,847, now known as Official File Ordinance 26, 2013, be finally passed by City Council. Mr. Brennan, Mr. Evans, Mr. Rancunzo, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Okay. Next, we have a resolution. Um, we have a public here. A uh, public hearing early. will be at 9.30. Right now we start with new business. We'll skip over the old business. I have a resolution uh, starting with number two. By Mr. Rancunso, second by Mr. Evans, at the financial statements and independent auditors report of the Erie Area Council of Governments for 2011-2012 compiled by Sean Sullivan. CPA is hereby received and placed on file in the Office of Accounts, Finance, and Budget. Mr. Brennan, Mr. Evans, Mr. Rancunso, Mr. Jones. Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Minarski. Resolution by Mr. Mursky, second by Mr. Brennan, the council file that the mayor and the city solicitor are respectfully requested to review the rental housing permits suspension ordinance of the borough of State College, Pennsylvania for legality and the feasibility of enacting a similar ordinance for the city of Erie and report their findings thereon back to city council. Mr. Brennan. Mr. Evans, Mr. Could I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mursky. Um, from what I read, this is a program that allows uh, rental permits to be suspended if there are certain problems with uh, uh, the tenants. Is that is that what, where you're focused? What, what we're doing here is we're asking, requesting the mayor and the solicitor to look at what State College has. Okay. and. Um, because State College is a lot smaller municipality, the resources that are available to them are different than the city of Erie. And then what we want them, what I would like them to do is check on the legality and the feasibility of enacting a similar program here and then report back to us. Um, what I've found is that we've been dealing with the same problem for t over a decade and what we're doing isn't working. Um, what's happened is that uh, as people are selling their homes in the neighborhood, landlords are purchasing the properties, and what you've had is urban flight, but not because of crime or anything like that, but because of quality of life issues where um, houses that were once owned by a family are now becoming college rental units. And um, there's been a marked change in, in the flavor of the neighborhood, in the, the appearance of the neighborhood, and our ordinances were designed for a different time uh, when these were all owner-occupied houses. 
that um, that's changed significantly. Um, for example, the 900 block of 38th Street and the 800 block of 37th Street are predominantly college rental units um, with three cars per person and um, the, uh, I don't want to say animal house mentality, but there's definitely a fraternal feel, a college feel to those uh, neighborhoods. And it's exacerbated the, the flight. And so what we need to do is look at some of these ordinances and say, um, the, co the college kids want to, you know, they have the right to live there, but they also have an obligation. Their rights end when other people's rights begin. And that's where I think we've been having a difficulty is saying um, the students knowing their limits and the landlords knowing their limits, because quite frankly, um, whether known to them or unknown to them, a lot of these college rental units are not, um, the areas R1, which is low density and three unrelated people, and they've been packing four, five, six kids in a house. And um, it, it's created problems in that neighborhood. So this is really just a, a, the first step in addressing the problem, realizing that what we're doing, um, while good, can be better. And um, that's, that's the reason that, that I propose this. Okay. And you're, you focused on State College because they, uh, they've been dealing with this issue, obviously, for a long time. Well, I focused on State College. Actually, I researched a, a lot of municipalities, okay. but State College is in Pennsylvania, so I felt like that was relevant to, to the, our ordinances. Um, the other thing is they're dealing with 40,000 kids where we're dealing with 4,000. So, but um, it's one thing when you've lived in a house. It's easy to say, well, it's, it's only 4,000 kids, but if you live on that 800 block of 37th uh, Street, and you know you can't get to sleep and you have to work in the next day that's that becomes problematic and that's not the kind of um city we want we welcome the college kids they bring a vibrancy to the city and, and uh, that we you know wouldn't otherwise have but at the same time we have to address some of the issues that have popped up as a result of them moving into residential neighborhoods okay thank you any other comments Mr. Clem, please. Okay, Mr. Continuing, Mr. Evans, Mr. Ancozzo, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Wynarski. <coughs> Next, we have a resolution by Mr. Mursky, second by Mr. Witherspoon, that the communication from Mayor Joseph Sinnott reappointing Gwendolyn White to the Erie County Convention Center Authority Board for a term set to expire on December 31, 2016, is received and confirmed by. Erie City Council. Mr. Brennan, Mr. Evans, Mr. Rancuzzo, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Next uh, resolution by Mr. Evans, second by Mr. Rancuzzo. A loan review committee approval of a loan to American Tinney and Galvanizing for $76,306 for five years with a fee of $381.53 at 4% per annum. Voting on the resolution, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Evans, Mr. Harank Mrs. Harankunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Mr. President, yes, sir. I'd Mr. like President. to make a motion to move the balance of the agenda. <coughs> we have a second. I'll second that motion. Any, se well, we <laughs> Any separations? <coughs> Hearing none, Mr. Clem. I Voting on the balance, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Evans, Mrs. Rancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Okay, that takes us to committee reports, Mr. President. Uh, Ms. Kuntko. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a follow up, we did meet with uh, Dennis Linsky from the EMTA this morning briefly to follow up on our um, public hearing and ask some questions that have been raised to us. Uh, we did find some information from him today and he certainly has committed to working out the issues that have been raised in terms of uh, shelters, benches, lighting and safety issues and he is committed to addressing anything that is given to him. Um, he, you know, we do still kind of go back to 
the chicken or the egg or what came first and why this decision was made and we really um, are not in a position to reverse the decision um, in terms of um, the bus route changes but uh, we do feel that he is hearing us and our concerns for the riders and looking at the issues that the riders will be facing particularly in the winter months and what's going to be um, able to help them to ensure safety in traveling and getting to those new bus stops so uh, we, he does seem to be interested in hearing from council and hearing from our, our citizens and of course the riders um, the issue of congestion seems to have been the catalyst for the move and um, the evidence of traffic congestion that was provided you know certainly we can't dispute if the traffic engineers indicate there was issue of congestion um, and that the change was warranted because of that congestion uh, that seems to be the catalyst and things um, you know that were not in our purview in terms of recommending those changes so we continue to work with him and make sure that issues of safety and uh, benches and shelters and lighting are taken care of and any issues of vagrancy and things like that continue to be addressed so we'll keep trying to push um, to make sure riders are safe and we did really emphasize the winter months and things of that nature so we'll keep an eye on it um, the there was an issue raised to me recently regarding a parking ramp on 7th Street I did have a chance to communicate with Ray Massing over at the parking to look at those issues so he is looking at the issues of exiting the parking ramp and things um, that were delaying the uh, folks from getting out of that ramp he is looking into that um, and the other thing I just wanted to mention is I just want to salute Amy Comptor for being such a trooper and she's determined and hardworking and she's here despite her own physical issues and things like that and you're really a champion and we appreciate you. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Mersky. Thank you Mr. President. Um, I attended the Erie Neighborhood Watch Council meeting. Um, it's good to see that they're getting reorganized and they're really um, moving forward. Councilman Evans gave a, a, a very good talk there on um, explaining land banking and um, they're looking forward to, to us uh, taking some action on that in the future. Um, I went, attended the Erie Insurance Arena grand opening. Uh, it's a first class facility and um, one that's a renovation that's long overdue for our community. Uh, the Otters game's coming up this week and, and so if you get an opportunity to attend, uh, when you walk in, you don't even recognize it as the old facility. It really looks, uh, it has that big city feel to it. And so if you get an opportunity to attend anything at the Erie Insurance Arena, uh, I encourage you to do so. It's really a, like I said, a first class facility. And um, we deserve it. I mean, when you look around the state and all of the projects that, that have gone on, Erie deserves to have a first class facility just like Harrisburg or Allentown or anyone else and so I'm glad that we were able to secure the funding for that and um, along the lines with the Convention Center Authority they received a, a 25 million dollar state grant uh, to build a hotel they're going to build the hotel not on the GAF property but on current um, adjacent to the Convention Center now where their loading docks are and it'll actually be attached the plans currently are to attach it to the um, convention center so that the uh, convention goers won't have to leave the building they can just walk right from the hotel into the convention center I expect council will receive plans on this in, in the future um, due to the fact that it's waterfront conditional use and um, so look for that on the horizon that's all I have thank you mr. Mersky I believe we can uh, move forward with our public hearing mr. Klum Thanks, Mr. Franklin. Pursuant to the proper legal advertising, the City Council will hold 
proceed to hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 2nd, 2013 at approximately 9.30 a.m. in City Council Chambers to hear testimony concerning the Inter-Municipal Transfer of Liquor License number R08452 from KM&C Incorporated, trading as Papa Joe's Pepperoni Cafe, located at 3826 West Ridge Road in Mill Creek Township, County of Erie to Pineapple Productions, LLC TA, Pineapple Eddie Southern Bistro, 1420 West 10th Street, Erie, PA. And as soon as the stenographer is ready, we will begin with testimony. Thank Please step forward. Good morning. She didn't bring us any snacks. <laughs> sure. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Karen Thomas, and I'm a co-owner of the restaurant business uh, Pineapple Productions, LLC, which does business under the trade name of Pineapple Eddie Southern Bistro. Our restaurant is located at 1402 West 10th Street at the corner of 10th and Westland Streets in the city of Erie. Uh, my sister, Adrian, is the other owner of the business, and we both work at the restaurant full time. And Adrian's husband, John Paul, is the chef. Our restaurant is our restaurant currently has no liquor license, and we want to have a liquor license there. And we've entered into an agreement to purchase <coughs> liquor a liquor license. Oops. The liquor license we want to purchase is a P PLCB liquor license uh, number R-7855, which is currently uh, in the name of KMNC Inc., doing business as Papa Joe's Pepperoni Cafe, located at 3826 West Ridge Road, in the township of Mill Creek. We are requesting that the city of Erie approve our application for an <coughs> inter-municipal transfer of this liquor license to us for our restaurant in the city of Erie. Some of you may remember that we appeared before Erie City Council last October with a similar request for a transfer of a different liquor license to us. You approved that request and at the time at the time, but it turned out that the liquor license we wanted had PLCB problems, and the PLCB would not allow it to be transferred to us. Uh, so we had to start over and find another liquor license to buy and the transfer and transfer it into the city of Erie. And that's why we're here for a second time. Our place is a full service restaurant. We serve a variety of complete meals from appetizers, specialty entrees, and homemade desserts. 
We're open Wednesday through Friday for lunch from 11 to 2 and dinner from 4 to 9 p.m. On Saturday, we're open from 4 to 9 p.m. for dinner only. Most of our customers are an older, more established crowd, and we have a lot of repeat business. We want to get a liquor license because it will enhance and complete the service we already provide and because customers have asked for it. It will also help us grow as a restaurant business in the city of Erie. We will not change the neighborhood if we get a liquor license, but it will help us to survive. If we receive a liquor license, we will keep the same hours and we will not stay open until 2 a.m. We will continue to operate as a full service restaurant business and serve the same type of food and, and the same type of customer. We will follow all PLCB rules and regulations and all state and local laws and ordinances relating to the restaurant and the service of alcoholic beverages. I have no reason to believe that if the, city, the Erie City Council approved our request for an intermunicipal transfer of this liquor license, that there will be any adverse effect on the welfare, health, peace, or morals of the City of Erie or its residents. I will be happy to answer any questions from the Erie City Council regarding our request that you pass a resolution today approving the intermunicipal transfer of this liquor license to us for our restaurant in the City of Erie. Thanks very much for your consideration. Mr. President? Yes. I, just one thing, Karen. Since I am one of your repeat customers, I do resent being called older. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Any other questions from Council? <coughs> Thank you. Can I just follow up? I'm Russ Warner from McDonald Illig Law Firm representing uh, the restaurant. Um, a couple of things. As I believe Council knows, there are two requirements of the PLCB and of the Liquor Code in order for it to be a transfer. One is that there be a duly advertised public hearing, which you're going through today. And the second is, is that following that public hearing, whenever, um, that the uh, council would approve a resolution, resolution authorizing the transfer from outside of the city of Erie into the city of Erie, this liquor license, would still be subject to PLCB approval and all the rules and regulations that relate thereto. Uh, we are requesting that following the hearing, if there's no opposition or any no problems by council, that you would uh, consider approving a resolution. Um, we've obviously been working since last October in front yes. of you trying to get a liquor license here. The PLCB didn't like the license that we found for reasons unrelated to this restaurant relating to the other license. Um, and so we're trying to move it along. We can't do that unless until we have that. I would also note just for the record that uh, there's a typo in the, the liquor license number that maybe we can change in the, in the resolution. This is license um, R-7855, and I've got for the city clerk a, a, um, a resolution form that, that he can use that has that. And again, we'll be happy to answer any questions or address any problems. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Anyone else here this morning speak in favor of this license? Good. Anybody else here to speak in favor? Anyone against? Anyone against? Hearing none. Any other comments from council? Mr. President. Yes. Are we prepared to, uh, to pass resolution this morning? Yes, I believe we are. Let's okay. move forward with this. I think we already did. We don't have to wait? We don't have to wait on this one, right, Clint? No, no. We, can, we can do it now. Okay. We can do it now. Right. Not like zoning, no. Right. Okay. Thanks. I believe we're done with our public hearing. Okay. Uh, then we have a resolution by Mr. Jones, seconded by Mrs. Saran Kunso. That pursuant to a public hearing held before City Council on Wednesday, October 2nd, 2013, and the provision of Act 141, which requires the consent of the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. The request of Attorney Russell Warner to transfer a liquor license from KMNC Incorporated Trading at Papa Joe's Pepperoni Cafe, located at 3826 West Ridge Road in Mill Creek Township, uh, County of Erie, Pennsylvania, to Pineapple Productions, LLCT-A, Pineapple Eddie South, B Southern Bistro, 1420 West 10th Street, Erie, Pennsylvania, is hereby approved. Mr. Brennan. Mr. Evans, Mrs. Rancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Okay, Mr. Clem, Mr. Clem, you. you had that license number correct when you 
Yeah, he gave okay. a clean copy. Okay, thank you. Just let me make sure. Okay. Just back to committee reports and Mr. Yes. Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to have a lot. Uh, here, so I want to get it in timely. I uh, also attended the Erie Insurance uh, Arena Grand Opening, a beautiful facility. Um, something, again, as Mr. Mursky said, is appropriate for the great community that we live in uh, to showcase uh, what we have to offer and, to, and then to bring some of the, the countries and maybe potentially even the world's uh, talent and, and gifts uh, to be displayed here uh, in the city of Erie. And so, wonderful uh, work that was done there in all the collaborative. Uh, individuals and organizations that were part of it. Uh, congratulations to the city as a whole. Uh, the biggest thing is we must find ways to support it. The citizens, we have to go to the games, we have to go to the concerts, we have to really get there and pack it out. There was room, uh, increased uh, capacity for seating, so let's fill up the seats and that's what's going to bring uh, a higher level of, of quality of life in the social and recreational arenas uh, in our city. So let's support uh, the great asset and regional asset that we have there at the Erie Insurance Arena and all that uh, we have in our community uh, to experience. Uh, also on that same day, I was at Mercyhurst University and was able to hear uh, Mr. Bill Strickland speak um, for the, like maybe the third or fourth time and it was like the first time. He's a great speaker in general, very charismatic, but also has a great message to share in relation to his project that he's uh, has established and is now taking it around the country and even around the world, Manchester Craftsman's and Build, Bidwell uh, organization. They do trainings and community development, personal education development, all types of, uh, of trainings. And it's a community organization that is rooted in the inner city Pittsburgh, uh, but it's really just become just a great space for learning, a great space for training. And I believe there is a uh, movement and there's some endeavor to bring something similar to that to the city of Erie and to this region, which I think would be, if done properly by the right people, the right way would be really transformational for our community. So uh, I'm excited about that and, and uh, look forward to being a part of that process. Uh, very quickly as well, I'd like to Take a moment, and I'll give an official report out to all of council in writing, but I just wanted to kind of touch base on this really fast um, about the summer work, uh, youth work project. Thank you to the whole of council for, for our moving this forward to in a very unorthodox and, and rather expedient uh, uh, manner. Uh, we usually don't do things that way, but uh, we understood the, the importance of time, and uh, so I appreciate all the support and, and and all of the, uh, the, the awareness of the, of the struggles and the things that needed to be improved. I think that's extremely important, not just the vote, but also uh, recognizing that there are enhancements that need and will be made if this is going to continue. Uh, but with that said, there are there were 10 young people we were able to uh, employ this summer through this pilot project. Uh, the $7,000 from the city council, uh, the school district uh, also contributed. We also had uh, a private citizen and, uh, a, well, he said it publicly, and a friend and a council member. His business contributed. Mr. Evans uh, also contributed to this uh, project in a financial way. And so uh, we were able to generate enough money to put 10 young people to work. Uh, they worked about six weeks at the second half of the summer. Uh, they worked at three nonprofit uh, community centers. The, so I would like to thank uh, the, Mr. James Sherrod and Ms. Fran Lee at the Martin Luther King Center, who worked as a host site and a work site for these young people. Bill Jeffers and Chantel Hilliard at the Booker T. Washington Center, who also served as a work site uh, for these young people. And Robert Gaines at the Parade Street Community Center that served as a work site for these young people. The types of work that they did ranged from landscaping, working in youth, uh, with younger kids and do, you know, playing games and doing summer rec activities with younger uh, young people. But they also got experience with doing some clerical work and in, in office work and some payroll stuff. And so there was a, a wide array of uh, experiences that these young people uh, had in those short six weeks this past summer. Also, uh, and, and I won't uh, give their names, but it was a diverse group of young people, male, female, Hispanic, white, African American, still in high school, new, new uh, graduates. Some of them were going to college or, and weren't sure how they were going to pay for their books. This provided them means to pay for their books. You know, so those little things 
uh, you know, for some of the kids that are still in high school, they were able to get their school clothes and go to, you know, I saw a couple of them, their, their feet look really, really well adorned with their new shoes and sneakers. And, you know, all those things matter to kids. Things that we sometimes, well, you know, hey, I'll wear the same shoes I wore last year as an adult. You know, we'll polish them up. But kids, it's just something about going to school fresh, as we say. And so this was a means to be able to do that. And, and <clears throat> Excuse me, I also want to send significant thanks again to council, but also to Paul uh, in the finance department and Maria, who they were so gracious and wonderful uh, to me because, uh, you know, sometimes I'm doing 10 things and they're very kind and, and helped me out and, and made sure these kids got their checks. We did um, have all money went through the city finance department for the payroll. I also want to thank uh, city controller's office. Um, uh, Mr. Kotowski and Lucy Braidbender, who was an angel that God himself uh, sent down and, and really helped, helped me and, and really kind of tutored and mentored me in this process of how to do it more efficiently, more effectively on the next time and on a greater scale. And so I just want to, again, thank everyone that had a part to, to play in this. Um, at the, in the next, actually, we've already started talking to some uh, other business owners and, and business folks to to see how we can expand this concept for next year and, and incorporate more young people, broaden the advertisement component of it, and, and all of the, the concerns that were raised and all of the victories that were won, I think is going to lend to us a great program to be able to employ some of our young people throughout the summer and years to come. And so again, thank you very much, and uh, I'm not sure if that beeped or not, but I'm done. Anyway, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I attended a few of my liaison meetings um, for zoning and property maintenance. Uh, we talked about build the building permits, uh, where they're at, and also landlord inspection program. Uh, the permits, uh, as you know, they're kind of slowing down, uh, leveling off lately. With a, you know, a lot of permits have already been taken for the convention center and the um, area insurance work. So it's slowing down a little bit. Um, and also, uh, I mentioned the landlord inspection program. Uh, we're always discussing a lot of the um, different things, problems we have there. But we're, we're, impro we're improving, and the, the system uh, is working. But of course, we're all gonna, always going to continue to improve how it works. Uh, but full compliance is now required with, uh, with all the, um, uh, the laws required there. At first, they were taken to, you kind of taken step by step, but now they're in full compliance. I attended the Erie Zoo uh, board meeting as the liaison to that group. Uh, just to update you, the, um, they're still planning their uh, bear and lion uh, exhibit renovations. Um, nothing's going on right now, but uh, they're looking to possibly bid that out in uh, January and maybe start construction in the spring. So I th I definitely that's that area of the zoo, if you visit, it's, uh, it, it's really needed uh, in renovation. Uh, the Erie Zoo um, uh, controls the uh, GMC Ice Arena. Just a little bit of news there. They're trying to increase and they're trying to market their activity because there's some uh, open um, open time on the ice, and of course, uh, if they could uh, fill those times, it's uh, better for their their bottom line. We don't want to have it remain open any time without someone being using using it. And also want to congratulate Cynthia Kreider. She's the uh, uh, Erie Zoo director. She was just published in an article in the um, American. Uh, Association of Zoo and Aquarium Magazine. She did an article on the Amur um, leopard, and really she's quite a specialist in this area. And I think it's uh, you know a very fortunate for Erie to have such a specialist in her in her area and in uh, such a talented, dedicated, dedicated staff member. Uh, I attend. I also attended the um, Erie Neighborhood Watch meeting uh, along with Bob and John. I think John, uh, Bob kind of uh, talked about that already. Um, I also wanted to um, uh, let everybody know that. Um, I talked about McClellan Park before and how they're working on possibly putting a dog park there. The um, Erie County Gaming, Gaming Revenue Authority just awarded um, uh, representatives from uh, the dog park representatives a, a grant to uh, uh, help pay for some of the um, some of the dog park in, improvements. And again, we're working closely with uh, the Burton Deal Neighborhood Association. We have a meeting coming up soon. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about how that fits into the overall master plan that was done in 2008 for the park. But again, this is, uh, I think it's great news for the park. You know, it's kind of the first step in what, we're, um, what, we're, what they're trying to do there. It's really what, what the Neighborhood Association said, this is what we want to see happen in our neighborhood, and, and this is really a first step. And um, right now, the, um, the City of Erie is putting in a, a roadway into that area, and uh, it's going to make it more accessible so that uh, when this park is built, it'll um, definitely um, uh, you know, all work out in the end. I, I did see the news about the um, 
Convention Center Authority, the new hotel funding news. And uh, yeah, I, of course, have a, being very interested in that subject, I'm very interested to see how it's going to affect the GF site. And would really like to see um, uh, really an update and status on the site plan and if they're doing any marketing right now, kind of the latest. Um, I don't know if we, uh, if we can get the information. I know they've given us a status on the construction of the site, but I'm looking really f to see what they're doing to, for the marketing because it's, you know, very, uh, you know, as, as everybody knows, one of the last parcels uh, in the site, that, uh, the bit waterfront that's undeveloped and, you know, very, uh, very important for the city of Erie. So I'm very interested to hear that uh, further information. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Mr. Evans. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, a couple quick things. Uh, the Housing Authority is celebrating its 75th anniversary this year. It was actually one of the first housing authorities uh, founded in the United States. So it has a very a long and rich history. And uh, it's going to culminate its 75th anniversary celebration with an event on October 11th at the Convention Center. And I just encourage people, if they have the opportunity, to attend that event. They have some outstanding speakers for that event. And I think it's going to be a great event to celebrate 75 years of contributions they've made to the Erie community. Uh, both Dave and Bob talked about the Neighborhood Watch Council, so I, I think there's enough been covered with that. I went to two flagship Niagara League events recently that were interesting. The first one was the Volunteer Appreciation Day. It was at the Erie Zoo, speaking of the zoo, the zoo. And it was nice to give all the volunteers a chance to uh, go in and take their kids and their grandkids into the zoo. Uh, the second thing was the, uh, was the closing sale of the Niagara for the season, which occurred this past Sunday. <clears throat> and I think the interesting thing about that event was we got a chance to celebrate the funding that was raised through the Tall Ships Festival. As I think a lot of people know, they raised about $450,000 from that festival. Uh, and uh, they're going to use that money to supplement other funding uh, for the next three years until the Tall Ships Festival is held again in 2016. Uh, so that came, that came at a very opportune time. The ship needs new sails, and that's a major expenditure for a ship of that size. So I think that everybody associated with the flagship Niagara League should feel very proud about being involved with not only the ship, but the festival. It was a great celebration for Erie. Lastly, I attended a Erie School District Student Parenting Program 25th anniversary event uh, last week. And it was really heartwarming to see how this program, supported mostly by volunteers, has made such a difference in the lives of young people who end up trying to deal with being parents at the same time that they're dealing with being students. Um, and this program has been focused on making sure that kids complete their high school education and if they have plans for further education to go on and achieve that. So it was really a neat event to be a part of. But what was particularly interesting to me is my wife and I sat with the business manager for the Electrical Workers Union, Construction Electrical Workers Union. And we talked a lot about the construction trades and about the the need for more minority representation in the construction trades. And it's something that I've talked with several of the folks who come to our meetings regularly about because I think there are a lot of job opportunities for minority candidates that maybe they either aren't aware of or aren't encouraged to consider. And uh, this gentleman, for example, said that all of the members are employed, uh, their incomes are significant, uh, the construction trades are enjoying a very good run, and he expects that to last for at least the next seven to ten years in northwestern Pennsylvania. So, and there are 31 construction trades. So I, it's something that I, I would just encourage people, if you're counseling young people about different career opportunities, if you're counseling people you know about looking for a different job or finding a job, uh, I don't think that, you, that people should overlook the construction trades and the construction unions. These are good organizations. They have great apprenticeship programs. They have great uh, journeyman programs. So they provide very complete training. And, and people, once they've completed that training, can make, you know, in ter terms of compensation and benefits, upwards of $50 an hour. 
So this is a substantial potential income. Uh, and, and they're very anxious to have more minority representation. So this is something that I, I intend through, uh, through help with, uh, with Mel and Curtis and others to try and get this word out to as many neighborhood groups as possible that there are, there are jobs out there that we just need to do a better job of matching the jobs that are available with the people that are looking. But I just wanted to share that with everybody today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Weatherspoon. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to congratulate the Erie Police Department for uh, expeditiously uh, making the arrests on East 31st Street, 300 block. Um, there was two break-ins uh, while folks weren't home, and uh, Betty Witherspoon did call the uh, police, and they did apprehend one of the three individuals. Uh, they did uh, approach her house and knocked on the door, and I can't tell you what she told them, but uh, they got the heck out of there. And they went right across the street, broke into a neighbor's house, and took his jewelry, some money, uh, some other things. And she just didn't feel good about it, so she called 911. Police came. Uh, two got away. They did uh, catch one. And the hearing is on uh, the 30th of this month. And of course, I will be there just to see who the heck he is. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, he's lucky they caught him and I wasn't there. Uh, and please put that on the record. Um, the other issue I have is I've been having problem having Sarah uh, Galloway get back to me on a simple tree issue. Now, we communicated through email about a month ago, uh, asked her to investigate. Uh, she said, we don't trim trees and so forth. And I asked her to contact uh, Miss Vivian uh, Tate because the tree is, is uh, appear to be somewhat healthy. And I understand that working uh, in Penelope. But also, there's uh, some thick branches that fall and hit her customer cars. And she said the city trimmed them previously, maybe a year or two ago. Uh, Brenda did email me and said that they don't do that. I understand that. And I sent her uh, Ms. Tate's phone number. She said she was going to get back to him. I, had, I made two phone calls, left a message, and I have not received a phone call uh, yet from her. And it's a simple call to Ms. Tate or stop by and visit. And if it's something we don't do and can't do, that's fine. But at least uh, give me a call, uh, give Ms. Tate a call, and uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, do I have anything else? Now I guess the bell, Jim Clem put the bell on me. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. Thank you, Mr. Witherspoon. A few comments. Uh, actually, Saturday is opening night for our Erie Otters at the new arena. I was fortunate enough to uh, tour it the other night with many of our colleagues here, as well as a lot of citizens of Erie. And uh, 47 million, it looks like about 47 million worth of renovations. Uh, very, very well done. Uh, like to invite everybody to come out Saturday and support our team. And we used to have a councilman up here who was a diehard Otters fan, uh, Jim Thompson, who served with a couple of us here on council. And uh, we miss him, and I'm sure he would have been proud to see what has been done in the renovations of that arena. Uh, we have a city worker. Uh, she's worked in the traffic engineer department. She's been off work for a uh, couple months now, actually probably half a year, but uh, there's a fundraiser for her this Saturday night, October 5th. You can always go to the Otter game, then head over here to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Uh, she got a life-threatening infection that 
is going to take very extensive rehabilitation and uh, they're having a little fundraiser on Saturday night from 7 to 11 and one on Sunday a spaghetti dinner from noon to 5 it's for Kelly Myers uh, like I said she worked upstairs in the engineer department and uh, great family great girl if you can support the cause please do Only other thing, uh, Friday, high noon, uh, October is Breast Awareness Month, and uh, they're going to light the fountain up, I believe. Turn the fountain pink, and it's always a pretty cool ceremony. Uh, everyone's invited. Come on down. The weather's supposed to be nice. Come on down for lunch, and uh, come enjoy. And uh, other than that, we have a finance meeting today after this meeting, and we're going to meet with our new police chief, Bowers for the first time as a council, and uh, we look forward to that. Thank you. Mr. Kwiatkowski. Uh, just a quick report. We attended all the relevant uh, pension meetings of fire, police, and ONE recently, all doing well. And I want to thank council on behalf of the neighborhood and thank Councilman Mursky for his uh, possible ordinance in the future on the neighborhood rental program problem. For those of you not familiar with it, I would be glad to uh, take you uh, in my wing on some weekend and uh, you know provide food and beverages so you can sit there and watch it. But I, I applaud Councilman Mercy because I'm tired of watching my neighbors slowly move out of my neighborhood one by one. And just to have the status quo for the last 10 years is not good enough. Not when my major investment is being threatened each day by uh, young people who don't know what it is to live in the neighborhood. Thank you, Councilman Mursky, and thank you, Council. Thank you, Cass. Ms. Beck. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we also attended the Erie Insurance Arena grand opening, and wouldn't Mr. Thompson be proud, hoping that the Erie Otters have a great season this year and enjoy their beautiful new facility. Um, thank you for mentioning the, the Pink Fountain event, which will take place on Friday. Uh, the program does begin at 1215. We have a couple of speakers who are going to share their personal journey, um, their experience dealing with breast cancer and how it has affected them, their lives, their family, their children, um, and so on. Wayne School Ambassadors will be here to share some uplifting song with us. Um, Panera Bread will provide some light refreshments. Um, but again, 1215 in East Perry Square. I hope everyone can come out. And if we can do anything about the weather, <laughs> we'd appreciate sunshine. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Mr. Clem, I believe we're done. City Council now adjourn at 10.02 a.m. Mr. Wynarski, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Evans, Mr. Rand Kutzel, Mr. Jones, Mr. 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 Mr